Hi, Hi guys. guys. My name is Nino. My name is Lulu. And this is Thriving at Love and, and Relationships. relationships. Welcome to Thriving at Love and, and Relationships. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. We're wearing white. We come in peace. <laughs> okay. You didn't expect that. Uh, <laughs> so, we come in peace for a particular set of people today. Yep. And our people that we have come in peace for are the... Single Pringles. The single people, the single people, the single people. So, what are we talking about exactly? We're talking about... Singleness, singlehood. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be sharing our experiences about how, because you know most people always believe that when you see married people, you feel like we're not single before. Yeah, we just, yeah. we just flew into like marriage. We just feel like as if we are married now, like everything is <laughs> just married, 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 married. <laughs> single people make married people not happy. Yep. So we're not going to be sharing about our experiences and things that we feel like you can learn, you know, from. There's some mistakes that we made that. I didn't make any mistakes. Mm-hmm. He made a lot of mistakes. If I was you, perfect. If you say so. So there are some mistakes that we, we, we think that we need to shed light on so that people can also learn mm-hmm. from it. I mean, that's why we, we do what we do. Yeah. You know, so yeah. All right. All right. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first thing that we have to address in this video mm-hmm. is... What does it mean to be single? Because mm. we have had different variations. Mm. I'm single when I'm alone. I'm single when this one, this one. I'm single when... Mm. Nolistic. <laughs> <Don't be those laughs> no Nolistic. Never copy that again. Nolistic. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be single? If you are not married, you are single. That's simple as that. Aww. No, let's be... Let's be, let's be I'm dating afraid. somebody. I'm not single. Okay, sure. I'm single. Scripturally, I'm single. But in this world, they will say if you are, you are single but dating or you are dating and in a relationship. Yes, in the context of what single means is if you are not let you are not you are not yet one with another person. Mm. And scripturally, is you've not yet had sex in your marriage. You are consummated, you're not consummated your, marriage. your marriage. You are still seen as one and one, yeah. and not one. If you get it. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so if okay. you are engaged, you are dating, you are not in a relationship, you still classify as. Single. single. All yeah. right, all right, all right. So tell us, how was your singlehood and your single life? What did you do? So I was not the best single. What does that mean? Uh, Is there a good single? Way there's a the way single? you can be single and you can be goodly single. Goodly and not godly? Goodly and godly single. Oh, wow, you are carrying us where we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that my single life, I, I just think that the fact that I haven't got or entered into a good marriage, or it was just the mercy of God. I think God was just being merciful to me. Mm. So you're saying that you <coughs> committed a lot of atrocities, that you were, you're not worthy. I felt I was not marriage. worthy, but now that we've learned a lot about mercy. And righteousness. That, yeah, exactly. And no matter <laughs> what I did, God still loves me, you know. But mm. at the time, I... Let me start from the beginning. So, when I was younger, a young boy, I was I was teased and bullied a lot, mm. and because I was very sickly, and I was I was um, it, it always used to show my face. I always enter into hospital and everything. And all I had was my intelligence. So people used to insult me <laughs> that you be carrying face, but look at you, you're always falling sick. When they want to play football, yeah. when I was quite young, they, I would always be the last that they would choose. Not because I was not good, but because I felt like I would just break down. So over time in secondary school, I got bullied, I got bullied and everything. And I felt like I could talk to nobody about it. Mm. And due to that, I got introduced into pornography. Mm. At a very young age, I that was like my soko. Like, okay, well, porn will not tease me, that kind of thing. And mm. because of that, I became highly sexualized at a very, very young age. Do you mind giving us the age just for context sake because when you say very somebody can think we're five maybe no no maybe like 11 12 that's not very very young that's quite young i'm not even in university then so 11 12 so going to the university i was already very a master of it a a master of it (laughs) and so i did all sorts of introduced to sex and all those kind of things and so anytime i wanted to go into a relationship it was for a sexual reason Mm. Yeah, I even remember that I had, <laughs> I'd actually ended a relationship in the past because I felt like 
if we couldn't get sexual, you know. So I wanted that. I just thought that I see. You are not going to give me sex. I know we do all this. Just stay, yeah. stay, stay away. And I had to break up that relationship. That's how bad. Oh my god. That's how how I used to end relationships, you know, and all that. So, but and that pattern continues. So if I would date a girl, I wanted a girl that was very, very attractive and had a sexual appeal and everything because and of had what a I figure. had a figure because mm. I what I used to see in, in pornography um, industry and I always wanted sex. Now I didn't feel like I had to. Even when I was in those relationships, when I was having sex, I would still um, watch pornography because let's say me and my girlfriend were quarreling and I feel like there's no sex, I would just easily go into pornography. And that followed me all through my adolescent years. So, mm. And <clears throat> even in between relationships, I could never stay alone. There are some people that they are single, but they are, they are not alone, mm. which means they must always have a girl that they are talking to. Yeah. They don't know how to be single and not yeah without a female counterpart and that was, <laughs> that was that was my case all through when i went for masters i came back i did masters abroad i came back entered into a long-term relationship mm. and it was that relationship i think i was in relationship for three years and after that when my heart was broken, was broken <laughs> in so many places i think that was when i finally now decided to think about my life mm. and luckily for me um covid happened so everywhere shut down and but before covid i had just gotten a new job which i'm currently working and we had done some rotation in, uh, ghana. in ghana and all those places yeah. so we were on a vessel and the vessel well, people are on a vessel is, ship. is a ship that carries oil and gas <laughs> so that ship we're going from ghana to i think Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire. So, and the journey took longer than it was meant to take so we're just on the high sea I was just there with some of my colleagues, but, but she I was, couldn't birth. She couldn't birth, exactly. Well, look at you knowing vessel language. I'm proud of you. I'm in. I reward it tonight. Can you focus? Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> so the ship couldn't birth. So I was just on the vessel, and yeah. I mean, I think at that time I started listening to um, is it Apostle Selman? Apostle, Selman. Apostle Selman. Um, what am I giving you your story now? Now you the <laughs> complete the. I'm not asking me. Yeah, sorry. Story. I started listening to Apostle Selman and all that, and. <laughs> I think at that point in time, God just isolated me, you know, and I had some encounters and my whole life was basically... Like, Mystery of deliverance, <laughs> to be precise. Yes, so I was delivered <laughs> from a whole lot of things mm. in my mind just by listening to those messages. And as I birthed and got back to Nigeria, COVID happened. So immediately everywhere just shut down. So I didn't have that opportunity to go and be doing anything with any girl or anything. So... I, that was my own encounter. I think that God used that situation to now bring me to see that more. See, this is your life. For you are living life on the fast lane, and if you don't slow down, slow down you're going to affect your marriage. You're going to affect the plans I have for you for your marriage, and it's just going to be very devastating. That yes, my mercy has followed you, but now that I've brought this to your knowledge, you need to actually, you know, slow down. Mm. And I think that was when, I think after my last relation, I took what I said. See, I'm not doing it again. That if I do relationship again and it breaks up, I literally had a concern in God. Like I remember it in my room at that time, my parents' house. I said, if I do relationship again and it scatters, oh I'm in God. the streets. <laughs> yeah, I told him, I was like, I'm just, just leave that thing for me. I'm in the streets. That's literally what I told God, you know. Wow. And you could just be here, just, just. Just blackmailing our beautiful I God. I didn't blackmail eh? God. I just told him, I said, see, I'll try my best. This one, you have to help me. At least this one, I've come to meet you for help. You know, help me. I don't want to start any new talking stage. I'm going to mm. meet somebody and say, oh, hi, mm. and this and that. And luckily for me, the person I now met after, who is now Lulu, was already in my life. So we didn't need to start anything new. We're just already friends. You know, and that was how the journey from singlehood transitioning into marriage, mm. you know, now happened. So, I mean, it was not, I was not the best single. I mean, mm. when I had that epiphany and revelation, I started making some active steps. Therapy, um, I tried to do a lot of rehabilitation, deliverance for more. <laughs> I remember. All these, all these soul <laughs> ties, <so> cool. <laughs> all these soul ties and everything. I, I actually took those steps. Then reading both, listening to Pastor Kingsley and messages and all that. And I think that was when I helped me for that, prepare myself for, for, mm. for marriage. So in a nutshell, a bad boy. Oh, a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs>
but God has made me his righteousness. <laughs> So yeah, that was my single life. Wow, mm -hmm. quite quite a journey. Yes, quite your a journey. singlehood. Yes, yes, hmm. yes, yes. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. All right, so um, what are you gonna play you? <laughs> you are not going to give your gist. <laughs> oh, nobody wants to hear my gist. Were <laughs> you a bad girl? No. Okay. Um. Oh, okay, how was my single life? I think it was. It was quite. It was quite a thin. Mm. <laughs> um, so I was, I never really wanted to be bad mm -hmm. or follow a wrong path. Mm -hmm. I just, I just felt like, oh, you know, you get to a certain age, mm -hmm. start dating people, mm -hmm. you know, whatever comes with that, just mm -hmm. move with it, you know. And I, I think I had dated about two or three guys. I did two or three. Can't I remember. I did that. But I have given it to this now. Uh, I think they did. I can't remember now. Yeah. Two guys. And I remember the first person I had dated. Just, the first person I had dated, right? How I even met him was a very funny, funny story. And then I don't think I was, I was really looking to date anybody, right? He just had this bad boy appeal, you know. Mm. It just looked like there was something about him, some mystery about him. Mm. And then we started dating. And when we started dating, I realized what the mystery was. What's the mystery? He was a cultist. Fantastic. So we heard it here first. <laughs> she dated a cultist, and just so you guys know. I'm shocked to hear this. Sure. Out, out you guys. <laughs> I hear my husband. <laughs> yes, so he was a cultist and it that, was. That used to get you. It used to yeah. get me so. So what? I, 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 I loved it. <laughs> I loved the fact that I was dating somebody who was bad. It kind of gave me a that thrill that she could die at any time exactly, he gave her you know like there were situations where he would go off the grid for like days and then come back and i'm like what happened like oh he has to go off the grid because we're chasing him da, 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 da. to somebody who was sane that would have meant <laughs> all which packages are run away <laughs> well you see that thrill is like you know i really watch all those shows like man no i'm, I'm, I'm going to hold him down <laughs> if they take him to jail i'm going to hold the, the the, you know. Can you let me say my story? <laughs> but obviously, I was not a normal person up there. I agree. You know, it, it excited me. And I didn't realize, I think it did not occur to me that, that my life was in danger dating this person. Mm. It was just exciting to mm. me. You know, I would travel to different cities to go and meet him in his hideouts and would we'll be there. And it was just exciting. And I think if my family members watch this, be as shocked as every other person because well, they, they never right. knew this side of my life mm. like i was a good girl in, in front but behind i had a secret life it was like secret life of lulu mm. basically you know and so I did our, next, that. our next youtube channel <laughs> secret life of, our, our spin off <laughs> so i did that and then i dated somebody else i i broke up with him i can't remember how or why we broke up mm. but we broke up sir. and then i started dating somebody else and this other person let's just say that he treated me like trash mm. basically and i didn't realize that there was something that i was looking for i mean i'll get to that later mm -hmm. Rosha, but this other person was i thought he was a good person i thought he was someone i was going to get married to even though i knew i was never going to get married to him right you know he he he, he would always pull me down you know talk about me in a certain way you know and i never was self-confident I, I just i just felt like and, be, and the reason i dated him was at the time he was in his final year when i was in diploma and so he, he felt like oh my god this final year student having interest in me what you know it, it was just interesting you know I'm, and i i felt like ah i'm a big babe so that was why i dated him but mm. to to him i probably was was a child that's why he didn't treat me well but after him i think when i started towards the end of dating him i found god and i remember telling him you know what i can't i can't be doing these things anymore you know i can't we can't be having sex we can't be all of that because i want to follow god and i remember he looked at me and laughed and said to me that this god thing that you are doing we've done it before it's just because of your age mm. because you are young you think that you want to chase god by the time you get older it will slow down i remember him saying that to me and, I, and 
and I was very heartbroken because after that he broke up with me. <laughs> I'm like you're breaking up with me because I want to do something good in my life, mm. and I didn't know it, but that kind of broke something in me because after that I went on a rampage. Mm. I went loose. Mm. I was in the streets. Mm. I was a point and kill kind of person. So I'll look around. Ah, this guy is nice. I want to have something to do with him. Have sex. Move on to the next. I, I was I was so emotionally damaged, to be very honest. Mm. And I think that was where everything started. Partying, clubbing, smoking, drinking, all of that. Did you smoke before? Really? You be bad, you be bad, well, they babe, bro. Now, nah, Jesus, now, nah, Jesus. <laughs> if you see me now, you will not know because Jesus has changed my life. <laughs> that transformed me. Mm. Anyway, Sha, that was that was really what my single life was. And I remember, I give, like I said, I gave my life to Christ, but I'm taking it back. Mm. And then at some point, I just realized that, you know what? There should be more to life than this. Actually, it was when I now met you. Mm. You know, I came and sports my parole. That's you know, I came and introduced me to one to a ministry that really just changed my life. And so, I remember so basically <laughs> her life today. You can see that that is huge. Actually, he did have a huge. He did have a huge. Uh, so God sent me over. Uh, yeah, but he actually. Did. And the truth is, after I had after while I was doing all of that, I remember one day I just felt empty. And I felt, I, th- I think I was going into depression. And I, and I prayed, that was the first time I prayed in a long time. I said, God, I'm feeling empty. I need you to help me out. And, and could you send a friend that will help me through this situation? Mm. I remember praying that prayer. And mm. then I think I met you like maybe a month after that or something like that. And then you introduced me to the ministry that I started working at. Mm. And I remember even though I was, I was still, I was still trying to know God. I wanted to be closer to God. I was still doing all sorts of rubbish. And I remember one day, the person who is now my mentor, FOL, he called me to his office and he said, Oluchim, there's something you're about to do. And I was like, me, no. What do you mean? Uh-uh. I'm a good girl. He was like, no, there's something you're about to do. Whatever you're going to do, do not do it because it's going to damage your life forever. And fear grips me. And I said, talking, okay. said, yes, sir. I was about to do cocaine. <laughs> it's coming <me> week. <laughs> and I already talked to some people to get me their dealers. <laughs> yes, sir. And I said, I was going to do a threesome. I said, I, I just started talking. And I don't know what it was. It just, I, I just, there was like a spirit of rebellion upon me that I wanted to do all the things they told me not to do. Whatever it is, I wanted to do it and do the opposite and as in run wild. And that was what saved me, really. Yeah. you and then FO and then he told me don't do it please he, he literally begged me said don't do it and the only reason why I never went to cooking was because he told me if you sniff it the wrong way it will enter your brain and it will kill you and that was how he put the fear of God in so you not get mad so I didn't do it it's the would be mad if you had said that uh, after I sniffed cooking <laughs> I never met Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thankful, I never, I never went that far. I yeah. never went. Thankfully, and after that, I think I now started becoming serious with God because yeah. I just felt like there was more to life than all of that. There was more to me than all of that, mm-hmm. you know. And then I started cutting off all my guys that I had around me. And I remember, okay, maybe I shouldn't say this, but yeah, I started cutting all the guys around me, and and I became serious with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that was when our relationship started growing. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. I, I, I believe I was. I always just say that. I think if you and I had met a year or two years before, yeah, we will not be here today. Never. Now is never possible. Not possible. Because at the stage I was two years before we met, yeah, I was on on rampage. Yep. I'm sure you were even <laughs> on rampage. So we we just have met each other and just have been oh yeah. one night whatever. Keep and, moving and move on. So, yeah. so just so easy. I mean, our single life is, was nothing to write home about. So, yeah. a lot of times when we, are, when we, I mean, before we started dating before each we started other, dating, yeah. So, a lot of times when we speak to singles, it's not really like as if we are trying to form. You know, we've been, been there. We've been there. Like <laughs> we've not even told the full because there are some details that we rather not. Yeah. Share for our family members come for us. I mean, they're <laughs> going to come for us for this one. Yeah, anyway. right. But yeah. But you know, it, we are sharing this so that people can learn. Mm-hmm. You know that. Not because we don't want to give you this. Exactly. So that you can learn because yeah. if you talk about what 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 are the things that we actually even learned mm-hmm. from um our single life, you know what we advise people not to do. Do you have any? Anything? Oh yes, definitely. Ah. Uh, I would say, and I think this is to, to the ladies, mm-hmm. is the fact that no guy can ever complete you. Mm-hmm. And 
whatever or whoever you're dating. You, you, you were looking for something. Yes, I was. Shit. I was looking for a lot of validation Why? because my dad was. My dad had traveled when I was at a very young age, when I was five. So he was present, but not really present. And because he traveled because he wanted to give us a better life. So he moved abroad and that went longer than it should have. And my mom did an amazing job in raising four of us, but there was just something missing. There was no, that father figure, that father, that relationship with my father was never there. So I was always looking for it in other guys, mm. you know, somebody that would tell me, oh, you look beautiful, oh, you look nice. Oh, ah, babe, any guy that told me, babe, you are hot or you look beautiful, it was a big deal for me, which is why, remember you were telling me was it not last week that i should learn how to take compliments yeah. right and that's because i never really saw myself in that light i never thought i was a beautiful girl was a fine girl till like maybe kind of recently you know and that showed in the in the kind of men or the kind of guys i chose so ladies nobody completes you there's no man that will ever mm. complete you there's no and it's not worth it trying to trying to how do i even put it trying to fill that void try to fill that void like because nobody will feel it mm. aside god and i'm not trying to preach but it really is the truth mm. it's it's only god that can feel that that can feel that void and if you ever think that you know you need to test the waters my dear mm. it's not worth it because all the ex because i used to feel that i need to gather experience when i get to marriage i'll be a bad b i'll be like <laughs> Mary Magdalene with some Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. But guess what? All that experience really did nothing for me when I got into marriage because I was I started I was with a different man than than that loved different things, that liked different things. Mm -hmm. So I would say do not try to look for any of this in any guy. Because yeah. they wouldn't they wouldn't give it to you. Yeah. Hmm. You know, in front of that, you mentioned that and for me, what I would advise a lot of people is, you know, when, when they tell you not to have sex before marriage, mm. let's, even, let's even leave, and this is my own, because I always like to be non-religious about it. From the religious standpoint, God knows why he said it, mm -hmm. yeah? But let's even put aside, we're not putting aside God, though, but let's look at the other reason or the other factors, you know. I was introduced to porn at a young age. I was doing all sorts of things and a lot of sex. And I had always had that opinion, which is what people say that once you get married, you wouldn't watch porn anymore. Mm. You wouldn't masturbate, you won't do all those things. I had thought that, that once you say, you know a lot of people feel like once you put that ring on, it's like, you really watch Transformers. Yeah. You just transform into somebody, <laughs> somebody new, new preferences, whatever. Yeah. But, and a lot of guys are struggling with this and yeah. they don't talk about it. When we got married, it was nothing changed. It was not even as if, like, oh, my yeah. wife, I'm not going to do this. It's still the the habit still followed. Yeah. And at a point in time, it began to affect our sex life because I, I had that conversation with you that because of all the sexual experiences I had, because of the amount of pornography I introduced myself to, my wife and I might be having sex, and the images popping into my mind, and not of her. Yeah. I'm thinking of other women that either I've had sex with or that I've watched in a pornographic scene to try and get myself yeah. aroused. And it had nothing to do with her at all. I didn't find that attractive. But there were so many images in my mind that it was just like as if, as I experienced that, I was pulling yeah. different images. And that's what happens when you expose yourself to sex. You begin to compare in your mind. It begins to affect your ability to focus fully yeah. on your on your partner for both men and for both women you to know give so, yourself fully so that yeah so our advice if you you should stay away from sex before marriage if you've already done it you can stop yeah and you can have a new state because marriage is for the long haul yeah you know and i think we're reading the scripture and we're we asking sex and um, paul is sex good he says sex is good however in context it should be done in the marriage container yeah. which means that sex is very powerful but there's a container, there's a that lead can that can control it. That can control it. Yeah. But if you've already started doing it before marriage, you've already taken it out of yeah. the container and it's difficult for you to control. Yep. So what I would say is, number one, if you can avoid sex, if you can avoid pornography and 
masturbation and all those sexual immorality before marriage. For men, even guys, please, please, please avoid it. Number two, go to therapy. You might not even think you have trauma until you start talking to your therapist. <laughs> That's when you know. Let them just ask you one or two questions. You will not know that you have, that you have trauma. So it's one thing that I made sure I did before my I started talking because I had a lot of anger and resentment towards um, my father and I had to seek some therapy to be able to express it. I think there was one time in therapy like I was just even crying. I was just waiting, you know, because I had so much pent-up aggression and it was also affecting the way I was in the relationship or how I even viewed women or even viewed myself. Mm. So please get therapy. Number three, if you don't have a relationship with God, you need to build it. Yeah. You actually need to build it because mine was a case of mercy. It's not because of anything I did. God just spared my. Some other people have not been that, you know. But if you have a relationship with God, it actually helps to strengthen your convictions yeah. as to the reasons why you shouldn't do some certain things. Yeah. Because if you tell you don't have sex, you're not convicted about it, you will do it. Yeah. You know, so building that relationship actually helps you, you know, to to um to build that conviction. Yeah, and to actually um, stay abstain from it. Yeah, yeah. So because you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, and just surround yourself with the right people. Because mm-hmm. I also, oh God of mercy, the kind of friends I exposed myself to from my university years to masters. The bad boys. Oh God of mercy. <laughs> you see that five six years, the damage that some of those friendships did to me. To my soul. Wow. <laughs> Solid cool damage. Because of what we used to do. I can't say some of the things, mm-hmm. but we did all sorts that I know that when I was asking for healing, most people ask for bodily healing. The healing that I needed the most was my soul. For my soul was fractured in so many places because of the things that I exposed myself to, because of the friendships. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean that did a number on me. And it's not as if I it's because of us also the trauma. I felt like I was not accepted. I was always bullied. So, and I also wanted to rule with the big boys. <clears throat> Do you understand? So, because I felt like I would be accepted there. And because of that, I was introduced to a lot of things that affected me. So, so, so in other words, what we're basically yeah. saying to them is take your single life serious. Take your single life serious because right? it has a huge, huge effect on your marriage. If it's you not decide the, to get married. Yeah. I mean, most people want to get married in Nigeria. Yeah. And so. even if you don't want to get married, it's still your life. It's yeah. still a damage that mm. you are going to have to live with. Yeah. So what you want to do is to live it to the best, to the best potential you can ever yeah. you can ever have. Some people are single and all they are just all they are thinking about is money and sex. But yeah. there's so much more to life. Yeah. There's, so <laughs> there's so much so more much. to life you know, so that much. you need to yeah. invest in yeah. and open your mind to. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I just give like an analogy. Like for example, if you maybe it's raining and you step in some mud, you know, and you don't clean your shoes before you get into the house. If you bring those muddy feet into the mm. house, you touch the walls, you do all those kind of things, your house takes that look of how your feet look mm. and everything. And that's what a lot of people are doing inside of marriage. Mm. They have muddy feet, they have dirt all over them, they've not decided to wash themselves and do the work and sanctify themselves and cleanse themselves they now carry that and you know the funny thing what i've seen a pattern is a lot of times the person that is now suffering is do not do anything yeah which is your spouse you may have had all those kind of whatever you now marry a good girl now i don't understand what it means to struggle with all sorts of things and that person now has to suffer for for that so to the best of their ability everybody needs to to be serious about their single life yeah yeah so I hope you've gotten something from this because like we said we're not just giving you gist for our lives yeah and we've, we've, ex- our we've lives. exposed ourselves yeah there's, there's no some, going back there's no going back <laughs> I mean, there's some things that we we i mean we didn't plan to share but we have spoken about it and we felt like um some people need, need to, to learn yeah. from this our story yeah you know because hey that's what we're all here yeah, so we so, hope that this really did bless you and help you. Let us know in the comment section exactly. if you can relate to some of the things that we've gone through. Yes, <laughs> Or exactly. if you are going through. And any advice okay. you even have for other singles out there, mm-hmm. whether you're married or single. Mm-hmm. And please, please share it with your friends. Share it with people that you know that it will help. Yeah. You know, comment, like, all of that. Yeah. And till we see you again. My name is Nino. My name is Lulu. And this is Thriving at Love and, and Relationships. relationships.